And and if you were to say say the top three things, you 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 you've absolutely taken the lessons that you learned. You know, when you said you discovered more about yourself as a person, how have you specifically used those now in business and with the children you're working with? Um, I just I just think you know rather than saying all three, I think for me a life skill which covers so many good things and bad things. Um, and when I go into schools, and I work very closely, sometimes one-on-one -on -one with children, and especially, you know, my passion is working with children who work in, um, who are in situations where they call PRUs, which is pupil referral units, when the, the child is, is kicked out of school, and then he's put into a pupil referral unit before another school allows him, allows him to go back into their school. And for me, that's all, because I'm not a qualified teacher, then for me, that's all about life skills. Because it's teaching this child then how to interact with other people in the school. How to not be the one who disrupts the class. Because by disrupting the class, he's taking education away from everybody else. So for me, a, a team environment and a changing room environment, I realized it where I learned most of my life skills. And that's the one thing I'm trying to do in schools now because whether we like it or not, every single one of us is constantly part of a team. Um, and it's how you interact with that team and how that, that team views you is whether you go forward in life or you stay where you are. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great answer. Thank you. So in, um, I mean, you, you, you've been a lot in the public eye and uh, Jonathan Ross show and <laughs> yeah. is the epitome of, of public appearances and you're doing a book tour at the moment. So, uh, I mean, obviously you, you, you had a certain amount of exposure as, as the captain of the Welsh rugby team playing internationally. But you know, since you came out in 2009 and all of that press around it, how, how have you coped with that sudden, you know, the, all the flashbulbs um, and the paparazzi and, the, you know, that whole thing? Because it does affect. Yeah, well, you. the thing is, I, I suppose how I coped with it was just being, by, being myself. Being yourself. Um, I've never, I've absolutely never changed. I have some great friends that, that have known me since the age of six and I keep people around me that have known me since the age of six because they're the people who really know I am. So if, you know, if I am kind of veering away from the person I am, then I'm soon brought back down to oh, earth, yeah. down to earth with, a, with a band. But again, for me, life is, life is all about having, having challenges and having different stages. Um, you know, all this is, I've, I've, I've done a book, not because it's anything to do, to do with me. It's again, what I learned at rugby is that what you can give other people, I feel, um, in strength or in happiness or in overcoming things is is almost I feel a duty to somebody who's actually gone through things themselves you know whether it be in the public eye or not I feel if you've had the strength to overcome something then your experiences just by opening yourself up to other people will give other people um, the strength the courage um, and the ability to overcome them um, and I always say to people is that people always or people may define my life or other sports people's lives by how many trophies they've won um, or you know how many accolades they've had but for me I feel my life and most people's lives I feel should be defined on the effect they've had on other people right. and if you have eff positive effects on other people then actually that's better than any trophy um, or any accolade any anybody could ever give you so what, what advice would you give to um, the people here, for example, in terms of um, what they should set as their goals along the lines of what's made you happiest? Um, well, I, I think for me, um, I truly believe this in, in, in business um, and, in, and in, in life, really, is that I feel sometimes um, we mold ourselves to think the person sitting in front of us or the person sitting next to us expects us to be or wants us to be uh, um, and that that's because maybe we think that will make us more successful in business or more successful in life but I really feel like you know for me my work is my life and I feel to a lot of people business is business is life and you know I'd rather work for a company and work in a business and I have friends and have people in my life that kind of know who I am 100% and are okay with that. Now maybe have three friends 
and you know, hundreds of thousand people who think they know me and like me. So for me, it's all about being true to yourself and being true to the people around you. And that's the best way I feel of being able to perform because, you know, as a sportsman, you need to be 100% focused in everything you do in the moment. I think that occurs in business. And if you're being a little bit dishonest anyway, you know, for, for whatever reason, then to be 100% focused all the time is a very difficult thing to do because you're always worrying about other people catching you out right. um, about not being honest. So it is about having that core of knowing who you are. Yeah, who, who you are um, and other people knowing who you are. You know, yes. I, feel, I feel it's better to have great friends who are your friends because they know who you are rather than having a friend of who you think they want you to be. Brilliant. Great answers. Um, so I'm sure there are loads of questions you'd like to ask Gareth. Who, who, okay, let me come to... Hi. Hi, Gareth. Um, sorry for asking about the tough, hello, uh, tough moments that you have. But um, from what I get it, when you had the, the neck artery injury and then when you went to assume the depression you know, um, stages, how, how did you deal with it? And I assume that's why also you're now working with the children and with the child mind to give back, as, as you have just said. So um, how do you uh, run the game from there to where, where you are now, I guess, to, to, to be giving back to people? I don't know if you hope you understand uh, my question. Yeah, no, I understand because, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I had an injury in rugby, which was like a life-threatening injury, and then I, you know, it spiraled into depression, and um, I had a lot of mental health issues. Um, and I, I, I finally realized how to start dealing with them when I realized the only way to start dealing uh, with certain things is to have other people help me. Because I find, you know, there's a lot of self inner pride in, in a lot of people. Um, and sometimes you'd want to admit you're ill, or you'd want to admit there's something wrong. And by admitting it, it's not only talking to yourself, it's talking to other people. And what, that's when I realized what the power of a team is, because I opened myself up to other people. I gave them the power to hold you know, kind of my life in their hands by being honest with them. And what I realized was that by, you know, by, by sharing my secret with them and, and sharing my problems with them, life became so much more easier. Because, you know, it's one thing to talk about a problem, but it's another thing to be able to laugh about a problem. And when you talk to people about it, you can usually find something funny between the two of you. And when you can laugh about something, and actually, you know, the problem kind of just goes away slowly. Hello. Hi there. Um, thanks very much for that. Um, there's, a, there's a school of thought in business uh, which says that, and we were talking about leaders and followers earlier, uh, that followers should often get paid more than leaders or man managers. And you often see that in sport in that uh, football coaches and managers, for example, get paid a lot less than, uh, their, you know, than the football players themselves. You see that star quarterbacks and NFL get paid less than their captains and coaches. Do you think that there's a space in, uh, you know, that there's a place in business for leaders to get paid less and get take on less responsibility in terms of how the overall business is doing than the people who are actually doing the work and the followers are, if that makes sense. Are you all okay? Sorry about that. Um, so the question was, um, particularly in sport, we see leaders, um, uh, we see the pay differential between um, the leaders and the, the people doing the work. You know, so, so managers are paid a lot less, for example, than the star players. So what do you think about um, more equality of reward? Because it's, it's a team. Is that kind of way what you're saying? As in business. Uh, well, I suppose to me, um, if I refer to sport, for instance, is that I think depending on what the job description is, then there's no way ever, like I said about a captain, a captain is only a tag, a leader is a role. There's no, there's no way ever would a leader be able to lead people to do exactly the same thing as him if then people know that that person is doing the same job yet getting a lot more money for doing it. Because um, firstly, and I think more, 
more of a human human stage that it's not fair and it's, that's not right. Um, so to me, I, I truly believe that you know job description comes into it. I understand that within business, you know, being a boss potentially gives you more stress, um, and potentially, you know, you have to you have to work with a, a, a lot, you know, a lot more other people, and your job description may be completely different. But to me, from the world of sport, is it people had had ever offered me as a lead, as a true leader, or a, more money t- than anybody else? Then I would never have taken it because, like I said, I, I don't think people are going to lead. And if you want to be a true leader, you first of all have to be honest with the people who are following you. So, um, but I do believe, obviously, in business, job description comes um, comes under it. But last thing you want, again, is when you leave a room, everybody you expect to work for you starts talking about you behind your back or starts kind of discussing certain things. They think when that starts, then the rot is already set in. And that's probably too late. So, um, for me, I, I don't think it's a fair reflection of, of a true team unity. And I, I'm, uh, I was um, talking with David Weir before lunch, and he he said that he thought he was going to be a basketball player. And in the morning, he played in a basketball match and they won. And in the afternoon, he competed in a in a wheelchair race and he won that. And the buzz was different. And he realised he wanted to be an individual performer. So what, 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 how, what, are the buzz you, what is the buzz you get from being a team player? Because you, you, you're very clearly oh, yeah, all yeah. about the team. Yeah, um, for me, the, the, again, being part of a team, uh, when you really truly understand what a team is, then it's great to have people there to celebrate with, but it's also great when you lose or when you fail to have people there to be able to talk about with your failures. But, you know, my determination always was to be able to um, make my, as a young child, make my parents proud and parents happy. And then when I got into a team environment, my main goal was to be the best I could be because I wanted my teammates who were standing next to me. I wanted them to, to think good of me. So I think for me, it was never, sport was never about me. It was always, and coming from Wales, it was always, you know, you, you're part of a community. It's what you can give back to the community as well as you can give back to your country. So for me, as far as sport went, I was always naturally a sports player because I, I loved being, being good at what I did because I loved seeing the effects that it had on other people. And I just took that into a smaller environment of 15 players. Uh, but I, underneath it all, you know, to me, being part of a team is, is being part of your country. It's a representation of your country. If you represent your country, then actually your team is your country. It's not about the 15 players on the field. Wow. It's about the representation of a country and a nation. And, and that itself is the power of a team to me. Yeah. I was going to try and say something grandiose about all about Britain means business. And therefore, you know, if you're British business, you're all about Britain to try and draw the analogy. I think you are far more eloquent. <laughs> um, so I, I'm really interested in, in the, this t- the thing between team, team sportsmen and individual sportsmen. Um, can you describe to us one of your great team moments? Um, God, there's been, do you know what, there's been so many, but I think for me, the greatest team moment, I suppose, ever in my life, and because I learned so much from it, and again, it's not all about success. This is what people kind of get, get mixed up with. It's, it's, it's not all, great moments are not measured on success. And we played for, I was playing for Wales and we played against Italy. Now Wales constantly beat Italy. But this year we went across to Italy and we lost to Italy. And we came back on an airplane and we got off the airplane at the airport and we walked through about 500 fans who just booed us. Welsh fans who just booed us. And for that, for the next seven or eight months, that booing and that negativity stayed. And the year after, we won the Grand Slam, which is an amazing feat. And I truly believe it's because we realized how tight we had to get because we felt like all of a sudden this nation that supported us were now against us. Yes. So we had, to, we had to work twice as hard, we had to do twice as much to get this nation on side. Um, and that's what we did. And we worked extremely hard. So for me, the greatest achievement, um, I suppose I felt as a, as a team player, is, is being able to bounce back from what was deemed to be the lowest the lowest point um, of our nation's rugby, and in seven months turn around to be the highest point. So it's not it's not a defining moment. 
it's just a time where we felt I felt we grouped together so much because we knew what it meant to have them on our side because we knew what it meant to have yes. them against us I mean you must have were you going into the hotel or whatever you're doing did you stand and talk about that you know, um, what, the effect? No, it was no, it was nothing I think again I think good teams when you have people who really care about the team sometimes things don't need to be said you can see it's attitude change and it's the way all of a sudden people start doing things a bit differently a lot more meticulous you know make sure that things are clean things are tidy things you expect other people to do all of a sudden as a team you all start doing them together and that's when you feel i feel the true team spirit come in Absolutely. and that's what happened after that but only because we knew that all of a sudden we had to win people back and it, we cared so much about it that we didn't want to lose them that's very interesting because often in business when when a team is facing really hard times and potential failure they start to fractionalize and go as off as individuals as everyone's trying to cope with their own stress so it's brilliant to, to really think about what are the lessons you know how did it happen that everyone drew together as a team yeah to and i think you know for us you know as a professional athlete you sometimes you know you, you, you sometimes get treated too well that you don't actually appreciate anything mm -hmm. because you're given everything on a plate and I think sometimes when things are going wrong, then it's easy to blame other people in that way. And, and for us, it was all about, you know, having a happy environment. So, you know, instead of just leaving, you know, leaving your strapping on the floor or, you know, not putting your cup in a bin, like be meticulous about your environment, look after your environment. When you start care, taking care of things, yes. then other people around start realizing how much it means to you. And then that, to me, I think that action is, is a really infectious a action that people all of a sudden start to realize, wow, he not only cares about the team, he cares about me, he cares about us. And I think if you do that, you know, it, to me in business, in the workplace, then it's very much like sport. You create an atmosphere where people feel like they're able to and want to grow. And I think that's what's important about it, is, is creating the atmosphere and the environment that people feel comfortable in, not only to be themselves, but to be the best that they could be in it as well. Yeah. Wow, wonderful. I think that's a brilliant note to end, actually, Gareth. Is there, is there any one last question anyone would like to ask? Thank you, Gareth. Uh, really enlightening to see how you've uh, made the transition from the field uh, into business. Uh, I saw a really interesting quote from uh, one of the All Blacks this morning where he said uh, about Captain Richie McCaw that all you see is him putting his body on the line. He doesn't care about it. And when you see that, you can't do anything but do it yourself. So how much pressure did you feel under when you were captain, not only to perform in your own position, but to put yourself out there as a, as a role model for all of the other players who might have been feeling you know, a little bit uh, under the weather, so to speak? Um, yeah, I think you know, professional sport is a pressure, pressure environment and a pressure situation. And when you become captain, and you do, you become kind of this, this figurehead, you know, this, this focal point. Um, and for me, all I, all I ever concentrated on, you know, as much as I just concentrated on the team, for me, the best message I could ever give as a rugby player, um, I felt as a Welsh rugby player, is, is, is you represent what you wear on that day. So for me, when I, you know, when I was involved in the Welsh team, you wear a Welsh tracksuit, you wear a Welsh jersey, you're a representation of a country, and a country is bigger than 15 people, it's bigger than, you know, than 70,000 people in a stadium. So, uh, you know, when you understand the magnitude of the representation of a country, then that's absolutely, that's huge. Um, and it's like everything with pressure. I feel like people either grow with pressure and they, you know, they accept it and they take it to heart and they care about it, or they kind of shrink away with it and and to me you know pressure i felt you know made me six foot taller you know made me you know puff my chest out a lot more so I, I felt the more pressure i got the better person i became because the prouder i became with it and you know if you go to if you go to schools and you know people the children in the school know your name because um, they've seen you on tv or they emulate what you do when you score a try and for me, that again, that's, that's pressure. But what an amazing pressure to have. Like what an absolute privilege of a pressure to have. Um, so for me, I just, I constantly felt that it was, it, was a, it was a pressure. That's not gonna last for the rest of my life. 
because you know your career is over in a blink as a rugby player so it's all about embracing that embracing that pressure and absolutely loving every minute of it and i, and I really did wonderful thank you so much gareth it's been brilliant thank you gareth thomas thank you.